setting tomorrow today. I know that's some really basic advice that you hear from every single YouTuber out there, from every motivational quote, from every social media post. If you follow a lot of pages or you watch a lot of videos, you know that that's a very common quote is that, oh, 1% better every single day. Set yourself up for tomorrow by activating your chakra today or some stupid thing, okay? But at what point do you actually decide that today's the day? And I'm not talking about, yeah, I feel like it today, and then tomorrow comes, and then, well, I mean, my Discord buddies are going to be waiting for me on Overwatch today, so I should probably go and join them to make sure that we can w climb out of silver. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. That was a little offensive. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Okay, so the point of today's video is how to set yourself up for tomorrow today. And I am going to be going through a little step-by-step -step process on why this is so important for you, how it sets yourself up for a long-distance relationship or any relationship in general, but for me in particular, how it set me up for a long-distance relationship, and as well the steps that you can take to actually start setting yourself up for tomorrow, starting today, no BS, all right? If you actually follow this video step by step by step, and you stick with me on this, and you actually do the steps that I tell you to, I promise you that within a month, you're going to be in a much, much better spot. And you're going to be in a much more productive area of your life. And you're going to find a lot more success with whatever you decide to do, friendships, relationships, future wife, anything. I promise you. You just have to give this video your full attention. You don't need to be scrolling through the comments right now, even though there are no comments because this is like my first ever video. But you don't need to be darting around and giving your attention to other things. Please, please, please just focus on this because this is step one of setting yourself up tomorrow today is by watching unedited long form content and actually truly absorbing the message that's in it and also practicing what you find within it as well. If it's reasonable advice, of course, which I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm giving you reasonable advice. Otherwise I wouldn't be doing this, but regardless, let's actually get on to the topic of today's video. So let me get a little bit more in depth about what exactly I mean by setting yourself to by setting tomorrow today. Well, I'll give a couple of examples of my own life, okay? So setting tomorrow today involves me with my bike over there. I have my bike sitting right over there. It's an emergency bike. If my car breaks down, I can still bike to work. If for some reason my bike was broken down and I couldn't move the pedals or the chains needed oiling or something and I was really in an emergency, I can always call my employer and say, yo, I'm going to be late by a couple hours. I'll be there at eight. And then I start walking. Yup, I start walking. Or I can call a coworker in a time of need. I'm very blessed that I have a job where I can call coworkers in emergencies, but 99 times out of 100, I won't ever need to do that because I live close enough that I can bike or walk in a reasonable time. Another way that I set myself up for tomorrow today is with my laundry. I keep a very organized closet. I keep on the far left, my workout clothes, on the middle left, my hangout clothes, on the middle right, my towels, and on the far right, my nine to five job clothes, my work clothes. So I know that every single day when I need to leave for work in the morning, I just look on the far right here on my work clothes, grab the next pair, put them on, go to work. When I come home, I change into my workout clothes. I throw my dirty work clothes in the laundry bin. I grab my far left clothes over here and then I go put them on and then I go for a workout, no excuses come back home, and then there's my towel sitting right there on the middle right, ready for the shower and ready for bed and everything else. My whole entire day has just been set by the fact that I organized my closet with everything that I need and wear. And I only have one closet, mind you, and it's not a very spacious closet. It's maybe 12 feet across, all right? And it has only one bar 
So I don't have a shoe rack. I don't have like, you know, shelves and closet space for days. I only have the minimal one 12 foot space and that's all I need. And that's all you should need too if you really organize your day structure like this. And then on Sundays, I do my laundry. And then that same day, later that day, I will hang up my laundry and I'll organize it all again in my closet. And now my closet's all set for the next week until I have to do laundry again the next following week. A third example of how I set myself up for tomorrow today is just by following by schedule. On my phone, in my notes app, I have a schedule for the day by day regimen, okay? And of course there are variations and I don't follow it 100% perfect. But for the majority of the time, I'm following this schedule that I have in my notes from Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday based on my work schedule. And for a majority of the time, at least 75, 80% of that schedule, I follow to the T, to the T, no excuses. And building that daily routine habit and following it religiously is part of what set me up to where I have a very, very healthy sleep regimen. I don't... And my furnace just turned on. So instead of wasting time and just waiting for my furnace to turn off to continue talking, instead I can come up here, all right? And there are dishes that I need to put away. So I'm gonna use this opportunity while my heater is going to put away my dishes. And this is another thing that I can do to set myself up for tomorrow today is just by doing tasks while I'm waiting for something else to happen. It also just makes things look a lot nicer and just makes things, you know, a lot better to do. Just something to do while I wait. Also note that I have my bowls organized, my plates organized, you know, my food bowl organized. You know, I have a lot of stuff organized in here because it all ties back to setting yourself up for tomorrow, today, by taking action today. Okay, so I don't remember where I was going with that last example, but I will provide one last example of setting myself tomorrow today. There is a fantastic eggnog elixir recipe from a good YouTuber called Kyle Ram, and he makes incredible videos about improving your hormonal health and really good recipes. I would highly recommend checking them out. And I'm going to link that video down here in the description below. And I highly suggest that you go rec check it out. So what my daily, re so what my setting myself tomorrow today regimen for that in particular I will make three glass worth batches. So I make a batch that fills me my glass for three days. And I drink that for breakfast every single day. And that keeps me full until 12 or 1. And then I start to feel, you know, fairly hungry. But then by then I'm at home eating lunch with my wife. So it doesn't make me snack anymore. So I've reduced my snacking habits at work because I've started changing my breakfast diet to only drinking this eggnog. And it's been quite the game changer because I noticed that I'm starting to lose a little bit of fat around my belly as well as it's making it so that I'm not eating and snacking on all these high calorie snacks throughout the day at my work. And I'm actually able to focus more at work and I'm able to be more productive at work. And it's something that I could just pour in a glass and drink within two minutes, I'm done, I'm full for hours. And I make it at the end of the day, the previous night, I make it and it takes not even 10 minutes to make. It is such an easy recipe that's full of benefits. And I just recently done it for Three weeks now, I've been eat, drinking and making this little elixir of his for three weeks now, and it's been incredible how much it's actually benefited me. I didn't think I would actually benefit that much, but it really has. So again, video in the description below if you're interested in checking that recipe out.
So with all those little life examples out of the way, how exactly does setting yourself tomorrow today help you out with your mental health? Well, it helps it out because when you have a clean environment, when you have an environment around your physical space that's very clean and tidy and welcoming and warm and comfortable, you have a good space in your head as well to have a clean, tidy, comfortable space in your head. And when you have depression or anxiety or any form of like, you know, brain blocking signal illness, even though it's not technically an illness, it's a chemical imbalance in the brain or whatever science there is. The point is, is that you can realign these chemicals. You can realign how you actually go about the day by practicing the habit of just setting yourself up for being nice tomorrow. It's not going to be an overnight fix. It's not going to be an immediate one week or one month even fix. It's going to be something that takes multiple months or maybe even multiple or maybe even at least a year before it really starts to shape how you think, how you feel, and how you act around others. It is a long process, but it is so incredibly worth it. I promise you. Another reason this helps you is that in the physical health department, it helps setting yourself up tomorrow today because just another little story here. Before I seriously started working out at the gym, I was working two, three jobs even for nine months between 2021 and 2022. I was working three jobs, 6 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. and 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday it was 6 a.m., straight to 11.30 p.m. I mean, I left work at 2, but then I had to get dressed and get ready to go at 2.30 to my next job. So Fridays were completely booked for 17-hour workdays. And then Saturdays were 6 to 11 in the morning, and then from 3 to 11 p.m. at night. And then Sunday, and then Sundays were just 3 to 11 p.m. And then Monday, I'd wake up at 6 a.m. and do it all over again. And my physical health took a huge hit during that time. I was experiencing a lot of upper and lower back pain, but particularly in my lower back, it felt like somebody like took my spine and was like constantly shifting it a little bit. Not like shifting it, but like somebody held my spine and was like, pushing it in a little bit. So anytime I bent over, it really, really hurt. And even like if I stretch my shoulders like this or like this or something, if I did anything with my upper back, it wouldn't be a pleasant experience. And my back was just taking a hit. Now I, I didn't damage it luckily, but it was getting very, very bad. And in 2022, I took a step down from working one of my second jobs. So now Monday through Thursday, I'm working one job. Saturday and Sunday, I'm working one job. And Friday was my only day where I continued to work those two jobs. And during that time in 2022 is the time that I took to really start going to the gym on a more regular basis. I'd go three to four days a week. And that's when I started doing a lot more cardio and kind of working out. I was kind of dicking around with it. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't really like actually serious about trying to push myself because I was working two jobs. I still don't want to really injure myself because my first shift job is still a fairly physically demanding job and I didn't want to burn myself out. So three to four days a week, I was working out and I actually noticed that after around the maybe even the two month mark, my lower back pain was getting so Oh, much better. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> but it, it, it was getting so much better. And then by like the eight or nine month mark, I wasn't hardly feeling any pain at all. It was so incredible the day that I realized like I don't really feel anything. Like any way that I bend my back, no matter which way I try and wiggle or move and everything, I don't feel any pain anymore. To this day, I don't feel any pain. That's incredible. And it's such a wonderful feeling to have gone from that to where I am now. And it shows, it shows in my posture and the way that I speak and the way that I present myself. And a lot of people notice the difference, okay? It's so incredible. I'm telling you that both your mental and physical health are going to benefit from doing, 
from practicing just a really basic today for tomorrow mentality. Oops. <laughs> so how exactly does this all wrap up into a relationship? In my particular case, a long distance relationship. Well, it sets you up for, in particular, with budgeting, with practice, with making, with budgeting, with practicing to make yourself happy, with practicing to make others happy around you, more social awareness, more social interactions, more um, enjoyment in your hobbies or your career or whatever else you decide to do. There's so many different benefits to having the tomorrow to the today for tomorrow mentality. And even the craziest thing about it is that it just keeps like snowballing, like a 1% better every day snowball, you know, because it starts off a little small first and then it gets bigger and bigger until you eventually get to the point to where you're a snowball that's even taller than you. The point is, is that it sets you up so that any relationship that you have, whether it's with friends, with family, with your future wife, with your future kids, Anything that you set yourself up for today involving tomorrow is going to compound into tomorrow because now you can set tomorrow up for tomorrow and tomorrow and infinitum. And it keeps bringing back a positive feedback loop where positivity begets positivity begets positivity. And it just keeps building on itself and rolling and rolling over. It's kind of like a 401k where the 401k rolls over each and every single year. And it starts off small, but then eventually it gets to the point where you can cash out with mil and actually over a million dollars by the time you retire. You know, it's the thing that financial gurus always talk about, but it really does apply in both physical and mental health too, I'm telling you. So let's get into the more nitty gritty about this. Why, if you don't apply this mentality to your current self and your future self, that you're most likely going to fail? If you don't set yourself up, you're going to fail in a lot of things that you do. Because if you don't set yourself up to be successful for tomorrow, you're just gonna, tomorrow will come and you'll say, no, oh, I'll set it for tomorrow. Tomorrow will come, no, oh, I'll set it for tomorrow. Tomorrow will come, you get it. You're not going to actually push yourself to do much if you don't help yourself tomorrow. Doing this single habit of setting things up for tomorrow pretty much automatically puts you into the top 20% of the population. Now think about it, that's one out of five people. So out of five people in a room, you would be the most successful or the healthiest or whatever it is that you're looking for. You would be the one that is the most successful. And it's really not that hard to get into the top 20%. Because think about how many people are saying that they're depressed or anxious or socially anxious or shy or introverted or something like that. How many of these people that indulge in themselves every day until their 30s, 40s, 50s, and then all of a sudden their 50s hit like a truck and then they regret their mistakes. And now they're working when they're 70 years old just to get by and they're working until the day they die. You don't want to be that. You don't want to settle for that. It should actually kind of piss you off if you think about the fact that there are people out there that are working until the actual day they die because they couldn't take the opportunity earlier in their life to set themselves up to be comfortable so that way they didn't have to work today, in their current day. You want to avoid that as much as possible. And it all starts today. Don't do it tomorrow. Don't start, don't cope and say, I'll do it tomorrow. Whatever you're planning on doing, please at least like take a journal, okay? Take a journal, write down like a little gratitude, write down a little like video topic, a little thing, you know, write down notes, keep a journal. Do something to set yourself up because life is going to happen like that. Life happens very slowly, but in the grand scheme of things, it all happens in the blink of an eye. Think about back when you were in middle school. How long ago was middle school? It doesn't really feel like it was that long ago, but for me, it was 14 years ago. Half of my life, 
time ago was middle school. Half of my life ago, I was in middle school. That is 14 years. And I still have very fresh memories and think, where did all that time go? Don't be the guy that says, where did all the time go when you're in your 30s and you still don't even have over $10,000 in your savings account? Or you still don't have a job that at least is somewhat of an authoritarian position? If you're watching this far in the video, because most people that are just willing to be average and settle and don't are just fine with sitting on their asses, okay? Most people, almost every one of those people have clicked off already. If you're one of the few people that's still watching this, and that means that you don't want to be is stuck in mediocrity and you are willing to set yourself up for tomorrow today. So here are the practical things that I would advise you to do to set yourself up for tomorrow, starting today. Number one, keep a schedule. I'll go ahead and post my schedule over here on my phone. This is my schedule, Monday through Sunday, repeat ad infinitum. It doesn't have to be strictly kept perfectly. There are times where you're allowed to have variables, but for 80, 75, 80% of your schedule, you need to stick to it and religiously stick to it and make it believable, make it reasonable like you see with me. Like I have an hour and a half dedicated to editing videos or recording, switching around whichever one I do. I have like 20 minutes that I spend with my wife here and then from like here to here, five, or I don't know if I'm pointing in the right direction. Again, this is my first video, but from like, 5 to 5.30, I'm cooking, and then from 5.30 to 6, I spend more time with my wife or I edit videos because I'm digesting, and then from 6 to 7.15, I go and work out. I have time with my wife, with myself, with plans and budget. You see that in none of these, I have 8 to 9 play video games, 9 to 10 play video games. I don't have any of that. 9 to 10, watch the newest episode of Attack on Titan. Watch episode 1024 of One Piece even though One Piece doesn't have 1,024 episodes yet. I don't have any of that idle distraction stuff because I find fulfillment in my schedule. So of course you don't have to copy exactly mine, but find something that works for you. And you don't have to like drop dead on all the habits immediately. Although I would suggest it, if you want to spend eight to nine playing video games, that's fine to start. But don't cope and say, oh, I'm really going to go to bed straight at nine. Unless you have like a hard set on your computer to where your computer shuts off on you at 9 p.m. You can just turn it back on anyway. So it doesn't freaking matter. You're just going to turn it back on and like maybe disable that feature and then just continue playing. So don't cope with yourself. Actually, seriously dedicate your day to doing productive tasks that will set you up for a future of success. And then of course this all ties in later down the line once you get your schedule together, now you can start practicing that schedule. Maybe it's a, maybe for like for example in my 8 to 9 I don't want to edit videos, I'm all caught up and I don't have anything to like, you know, record or anything. From 8 to 9 maybe I'll read a book. I'm currently in the middle of reading How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yes, I'm using a Pringle for a book binder. Come fight me about it. But I'm currently about maybe two thirds of the way through the book. I only spend about an hour every three or four days reading this thing. But when I do read it, I at least apply what I learned into the future. Tomorrow, I'll like remember what I read in this book. I will remember what I read and then I'll go and apply it at my workplace. I'll smile at somebody. I'll say, how's your day going? Or, hey, are those tire carriers done yet? Or I've heard we had a big order for these FBs over there. You can practice and engage in idle chatter and stuff, or, but that's, but that's for the book, okay? So we're focusing on just getting your life together and setting yourself up for success tomorrow. Another thing that you can do to set yourself up is set backup plans if your plans fail. 
So if something happens in your schedule where my car breaks down and now I can't actually go to the gym, my backup plan is that I could just do push-ups. I could do planks, I could do squats, I could do, you know, I can do like curls and there's probably something like, yeah, my tree out in the yard, one of my trees, I could sit there and do pull-ups, you know, and I can run around outside, which I normally do on my first break anyways. On my first break, I literally, on my first break at my job, I'll go and run around outside and get the morning sun in my eyes. The point is, is that having backup plans puts ease of mind to your mind. It makes it so that even if something goes wrong in your schedule that you set for tomorrow, you still have the flexibility to have another thing that's productive to do in that time. So that way you don't cope and say, oh, well, I'm late for work, so I may as well take the day off or my car is broken and I don't have the money to fix it, so I better go and borrow money and throw myself more into debt just so I can fix this to get by. Have a savings plan, have a plan for emergencies, have an emergency bucket, do something to keep yourself from getting stuck in a place to where you can't get out of it for months on end and you end up throwing your whole entire self-improvement journey out of the window because you didn't have a backup plan for your schedule. That's import That's an important step number two. Number three, you need to make sure that you religiously stick to whatever you decide to do. Like, for example, um, Hamza recently released a video going over writing out goals and setting yourself up for monk mode, right? These are the 10 goals that I had set for myself. You'll see that I have circled two of them. And you'll see that I have not crossed out the others because I didn't want to waste all my marker. But the point is that these two goals of getting 12,000 subs and being able to bench my body weight five times by the end of the year are my two most important goals. Why is that? Because when I'm able to because it's my goal to be able to have a community to help other people with their long distance relationships. Now this video isn't in particular dedicated to long distance relationships, but it ties heavily into the mentality that you need to have a successful long distance relationship. So you can find a foreign woman, so you can immigrate them to the United States, so you can marry them and have a blessed marriage and have a happy family with them. But this applies for anyone, not just people who want an LDR, not just people who want to be in a same-sex relationship, not just for people who want to be, you know, whatever you are. This is for anyone that wants to make a better life for tomorrow, and then tomorrow, and then tomorrow. This is for you. But with all that being said, I really hope that this video helped you. I'm hopeful that in a few months time, you'll come back to this video and share your story with me in the comments. Or maybe you're at my age and you've already been successful somewhere and you can share your story as well. My heater turned on and I'm not gonna bother waiting to um, finish this video by waiting for it because I got like another minute, but I really hope that if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like. It'll get the word out to other people and then those people can have successful lives. And then the positivity begets positivity loop comes back in full force even more. Helping me helps you, and I can help you if you help me. Let's be in this together. I really hope that you have a wonderful day. I'll see you around, all right?